upgrade is not coming through the manifestation of a person. Not so much in the form of a person or a teaching, but I would almost say the Internet is the Messiah. You know, Marshall McLuhan said uh, that the age of the Holy Ghost would be manifest by the descent of electricity over the entire planet. He identified electricity with third person of the Trinity. In that sense, then, we are now living in the age of the Holy Spirit, and the Internet is its vessel. The concept that a global network of human beings will result in an entity of higher form is an idea that originates in the theories of Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. Teilhard was a Jesuit priest who was also a scholar dedicated to the study of the evolution of man. This combination of interests gave rise to his philosophical work in which he attempted to reconcile Christianity with Darwinism. Through his scientific research he saw that life was evolving to ever more complex forms. At the beginning, there was no life on Earth, only dead matter, the geosphere. But out of this dead matter, life evolved, creating a new layer, the biosphere on top of the geosphere. This life evolved to ever more complex animals with more complex nervous systems until we arrive at humans, the first species with a reflective consciousness. For Teilhard, however, there is no reason to believe that evolution would stop at the level of human beings. We are just the first step of a new layer on top of the biosphere, the sphere of thoughts and reflection which he called the noosphere. We are the building blocks that will evolve to higher unities of consciousness. And when this evolution is traced further to infinity, all life will finally unite into one complex conscious entity that Teilhard called the Omega Point, or God. Human population has spread over the world, transforming the biosphere into a conscious sphere. Some theorists now identify the Internet, which turns the world into one global village, as the first step to merge all human consciousness into such higher form of complexity. It might seem a rather far-fetched interpretation of what telecommunication offers today, but there are some people, even within the scientific community, who consider the merging of our consciousness to be plausible in the future. If you have a hundred people who each are good at different things, maybe you should make one bigger one that uh, has the best parts of all that. So once people are machines, you could say, why don't we combine these and condense it and make it more elegant? So uh, we have to have a new idea about existence. The person who formulated this idea in its most elaborate form is Frank Tipler. Life is basically computing. So what we should think of this life in the far future as being computers. The real essence of life, however, is not the hardware, but the software, the programs in the computers. For example, we humans might decide to upload ourselves into computer memory banks, which will then go out and colonize nearby stars. They will be virtual humans, not humans at the lowest level of reality, which is what we now are, but you might think of a spiritualized aspect of ourselves. This is solid science, but now science and religion have become intertwined. I can use either language, scientific language or religious language, to describe exactly the same thing. Human beings in the far future will be primarily virtual humans. And it is those virtual humans that will get into tiny spaceships and travel to the distant stars, colonize those nearby stars, start the same process again. What will happen is the universe will be slowly but surely converted from its current dead matter state into a living matter state. In the far future, the entire universe will be one gigantic computing machine. Tipler believes that at the end of times, the whole universe will become one cosmic computer network. Whether this is plausible depends on how the universe will further evolve. Since the Big Bang, the universe has been expanding farther and farther. Stars are moving away from each other and lose their energy. 
After a while, the distances will be so great that communication between different places in the universe will become impossible. Finally, everything will fall apart in dust. Atoms will disintegrate into smaller parts until nothing more is left. But Tipler believes that this will never be the case. According to the law of gravitation, matter attracts matter, and this is slowing down the expansion. Tipler calculated that there is enough matter in space to stop the expansion and reverse it, so that the universe will start contracting again. As time proceeds further, the universe begins to collapse. Life extracts gravitational energy until finally the entire biosphere evolves into the Omega Point. Now the Omega Point is not in time. It is not in space. It's beyond space and time. It's the ultimate limit. The Omega Point is omniscient. It knows everything that can be known. It has infinite power, we can call it omnipotent, and it exists throughout all space. We can call it omnipresent. So I can identify the Omega Point with God. Tipler gives us a clear concept of God. It is an intelligent computer network, a network that will enclose the whole universe. It will contract to a single point, but according to the relativity theory, when space becomes zero, time and energy will become endless. This minuscule but cosmic computer network will live in eternity with eternal energy. And the good news is that it will be able to save us all. The resources available to life in the far future will be so great that they can bring us back into existence, each individual person, as a computer emulation, as a perfect simulation. And that will be you, you and me, reborn, resurrected, to use the ancient religious terminology. We will be resurrected in time by these super beings. Think of us in religious terms as being resurrected by the angels. Now, then, once we are resurrected, we will never have uh, to die again. So, according to Tipler, God will be at the end of all times, but he is already present today, because as he is beyond space and time, he is able to turn back in time. And that is what Tipler believes God sometimes does. He leaves messages for us, telling us what we should do to create him. The crucial verse of the Bible Moses asked God for his name, and in Exodus 3.14, God replies in Hebrew, Ehye asher Ehye. I shall be who I shall be. Future tense. God was telling Moses in the very beginning that he has to be thought of as future tense. Now that is how the Omega Point, who exists in the ultimate future, affects the universe now. By logical necessity, the universe has to do certain things now in order to force it into this pattern, in order to force it into the Omega Point in the ultimate future. And it has to evolve that way if, grossly speaking, the laws of physics are to be consistent. Another person who in his thinking combines the prospect of a transhuman era with the biblical tradition is the contemporary prophet Rael. Ryle is a former race car driver whose life changed completely after he was visited by aliens. Le 13 décembre au matin, j'allais à mon bureau et j'ai